We are working on higher order derivatives. In the last video, we did a couple of examples of finding the second derivative. There will be some problems where you have to go beyond that. Recall that we have the notation is pretty consistent throughout, and I recommend that you stay on top of the notation. Whenever you take another derivative, enforce the new derivative notation. If you're just simplifying the derivative, then keep that notation as it was. So I have an example here of f of x equals square root of 5x plus 4 over x squared. And in this problem, we want to find f to the fourth. That means we want to take the fourth derivative. So we're going to have to take the derivative four different times. I suggest that you pause the video and see if, if you can keep everything consistent all the way through your fourth derivative. The first thing that we need to do is we need to rewrite this. We don't know how to take the derivative of the square root without rewriting it first. And we can take the derivative of this by using the quotient rule, but we know we can rewrite it into exponential format, and that's going to be a little bit easier. So let me just rewrite what I have. Since I am just rewriting it, it is still just my original equation. Let me do my second piece. It's the easier part to see. I know I can move my x squared upstairs, so it gives me 4x to the negative 2. That's my bad attitude. Okay, what about the square root of 5x? So let me tell you what most students do to get it incorrect, is they take square root of 5x and they write it as 5x to the 1 half power. That looks good. But if you were to take this and put it in reverse order, so let me rewrite it, this would actually be 5 times the square root of x. So we can see that this 5 here is inside the root, and this 5 here is outside the root. So this is not the correct notation because it doesn't translate forwards and backwards correctly. So the way that I like to explain this is split it up. Think about it as square root of 5 times the square root of x. And now we can rewrite it as square root of 5 times x to the 1 half power. So I still have it in my constant times x to some power format. And so this is the best notation that we can put it in. There is another way that we can rewrite it. So we can take my square root of 5x and say that we have it all to the 1 half power. And that is perfectly acceptable. But the problem with this is this uses a derivative rule that we have yet to learn. We have one more rule that we need to discuss, and this uses that rule. So I don't want to put it in this format now because I don't know that rule, and it would be extremely complicated to try and take the derivative without doing it. So that's why I suggest to put it in this notation here. So I'm going to rewrite this as square root of 5 times x to the 1 half power. And this is added to my second piece. All right, now it's in the format that I want to do it in. So now I can start taking the derivative of these pieces. So my first derivative, f prime of x. So I need to bring my power down, keep my square root of 5 as is, just put it over 2. That's the easiest way to multiply it by 1 half. And then times x, when I subtract a power, 1 half minus 1 gives me a negative 1 half. Here, a positive 4 times a negative 2 gives me negative 8. x, and when I subtract a power, that gives me x to the negative 3. So that's my first derivative. If I could simplify this at all, I would before moving on. This doesn't really simplify. I can rewrite it without my exponents, meaning in fractions or in root format, but that's not going to gain me any ground. So I'm going to keep it as is. So that means I'm ready to take my second derivative, f double prime of x. Multiply again my coefficient and my exponent, negative root 5 over 2 times 2, which gives me 4. x, when I subtract a power, gives me negative 3 halves. Multiply here, negative 8 times negative 3 gives me positive 24, x to the negative fourth power. 
Again, if I could simplify it, I would. I can't, so that means I'm ready to move on to my third derivative, or f triple prime of x. Multiplying again my fraction straight across. On the top, negative times negative gives me positive. I have 3 times my square root of 5. I have to keep my 3 on the outside of my root and my 5 on the inside of my root. In the denominator, 4 times 2 gives me 8. x, if I subtract 1, that gives me negative 5 halves. 24 times negative 4 gives me a negative 96, and that is x to the negative fifth power. Again, simplify it if you can. I can't, so I'm going to move on to my last derivative, f to the fourth, or the fourth derivative of my function here. Again, multiply straight across. Negative 3 times 5 gives me 15. Square root of 5 over 8 times 2 gives me 16. x, if I subtract a power, that gives me negative 7 halves. 96 times 5 gives me a positive 480, because my negatives cancel out and x to the negative 6th power. Since it just asked for my fourth derivative, I am perfectly fine with this as an answer here. If you would like to practice rewriting it, I would encourage you to do so. So let me rewrite it without my exponential format, so back into fractions and roots. So I have negative 15 root 5 over 16. My x to the negative, so that goes in the bottom, I have my 2 as a denominator, so that's a square root, and then this is to the 7th power. Plus 480 stays in the numerator over x to the 6 moves down to the denominator. I can simplify this just a teeny tiny bit. I might want to combine my roots here. I don't think it's going to get me anywhere, so I would probably just leave this as is in the simplification step. If you want to combine them, that's fine too. Let me just show you real quick what that would look like. Negative 15 over 16 times the square root of 5 over x to the 7th. And again, I don't think that's really necessarily any simpler, so you can do that step as you wish. So now you can see an example of taking the derivative of the derivative quite a few times, specifically four different times in this example here. The one thing that I do want to emphasize, which didn't really apply in this problem, is make sure you simplify the previous derivative as much as possible before you move on to the next derivative. That's going to make your derivative process a lot easier in these examples. 